Hello everybody. Welcome to our lesson. Today's topic is magnetic properties of matter. At the end of the lesson you will be able to describe magnetic properties of matter, define diamagnetic, paramagnetic and ferromagnetic materials, explain Curie temperature and explain the theory of magnetism. It's a familiar observation that certain solids such as iron and steel are strongly attracted to magnets. However, an important principle that is commonly overlooked is the fact that all matter exhibits magnetic properties. Even substances like copper and aluminium that are not normally thought of having magnetic properties are affected by the presence of a magnet. All substances are known to display a weak repulsion to a magnetic field. But few elements like copper, silicon, gold and bismuth have stronger repulsion than others. In addition, many substances such as silver, oxygen and copper sulfate are weakly attracted to magnets. Depending on whether there is a repulsion or attraction by the pole of a magnet, matter is classified as being diamagnetic and paramagnetic respectively. A few materials such as iron show a very large attraction toward the pole of a permanent bar magnet. Materials of this kind are called ferromagnetic. So matter are divided into three groups according to their interaction with the magnet. So we have diamagnetic materials which are weakly repulsed and we have a paramagnetic materials they are weakly attracted to a magnet and we have ferromagnetic materials they are strongly attracted to a magnet. So pay attention to this demonstration. We have a solenoid here when solenoid is wound around the vacuum, it has a magnetic field of B0. And when solenoid has a core, its magnetic field strength changes. Let's call it B. And you know from previous lessons that if a solenoid is wound around an iron core, the magnetic field strength increases dramatically. Well, iron is a ferromagnetic material. It means when ferromagnets are placed in a magnetic field, they are magnetized strongly along the field. And how can we calculate relative permeability? Relative permeability of a matter is the ratio of magnitude of the magnetic field strengths after a magnetic material is placed inside the magnetic field to before it was placed. Simply, relative permeability of a material can be calculated by the magnetic field strengths when this material, material is inside the magnetic field to a magnetic field strength when there is a vacuum. So relative permeability is B over B0. Also relative permeability can be considered as the ratio of permeability of a material to the permeability of free space. Relative permeability is equal to mu over mu zero. But what about paramagnetic and diamagnetic materials? I mean, how do they change a magnetic field in which they are placed? So from observations, we know that paramagnetic materials slightly increase magnetic field strengths. But diamagnetic materials, they slightly decrease magnetic materials. From these observations, we can say that paramagnetic material has a relative permeability a bit more than one and diamagnetic materials have a relative permeability a bit less than one. Okay, ferromagnetic materials we said they form very strong internal induced magnetic fields in the direction of applied magnetic fields and relative permeability is much bigger than one when a ferromagnetic material is placed inside the magnetic field, the magnetic field lines bends 
toward it. Paramagnetic materials form internal induced magnetic fields in the direction of applied magnetic fields. Relative permeability is a bit more than one. And when this material is placed inside the magnetic field, the magnetic field lines prefer to pass from this material rather than a vacuum. Diamagnetic materials form internal induced magnetic fields opposite to the direction of applied magnetic fields. And relative permeability is a bit less than one. When a diamagnetic material is placed, the magnetic field bends slightly away from it. Relative permeabilities of some materials are listed in this table, and from this table we can say that copper, silver, bismuth and carbon, they are diamagnetic materials, because relative permeabilities are less than one, and aluminium, magnesium and air are paramagnetic materials, because they have relative permeabilities a bit more than one, and cobalt, nickel, iron, they are paramagnets their relative permeabilities are much bigger than one. And if we look at the periodic table, three elements have ferromagnetic properties. They are iron, cobalt and nickel. And following elements above painted with green have diamagnetic properties. And all other elements in the table have paramagnetic properties, but except chromium because it's not classified in any of these groups. It has properties of so-called antiferromagnetism. It's a long story actually, but I'm not in a hurry. Hope you do too. So I'll explain this. Antiferromagnetic materials have similarities to ferromagnetic materials. Like in ferromagnets, when no external field is applied, the antiferromagnets show no magnetization. In an external magnetic field, a kind of ferromagnetic behavior may be displayed. Antiferromagnetic materials occur commonly among transition metal compounds, especially oxides. Examples include metals such as chromium, alloys such as iron manganese, and oxides such as nickel oxide. The most important thing is here. This diagram shows the type of magnetism of elements at only a room temperature. It means that in other temperatures the magnetic properties of materials also change. Let's have a look at this amazing periodic table. It shows the magnetic property change of each element with the temperature change. Let's start at room temperature. This is the diagram I showed you just before. What will happen if I decrease the temperature? Many paramagnets turned into antiferromagnets and then some of them to ferromagnets. And this is the magnetic property of materials at absolute zero temperature. Next, I will increase the temperature and let's see how the magnetic properties would change. Pay attention to a chromium. At around 313 Kelvin, chromium, which has an antiferromagnetic property, loses its property and now it's a paramagnet. And also at around 630 Kelvin, here, nickel, which is ferromagnet, which is one of three ferromagnets loses its property and now it's also one of the paramagnets and we have only iron and cobalt let's see which one loses first its magnetic property it is iron at around 1040 kelvins iron the most popular ferromagnet loses its property and turns into paramagnet. From now on, 
Only cobalt is the ferromagnet and it seems the, that cobalt is the most durable ferromagnet against temperature and let's find its temperature where it loses its property well this is at around 1390 kelvins cobalt also loses its ferromagnetic property and the most interesting observation is that during all this temperature change to down and up the diamagnetic materials remained as diamagnets and we can say that diamagnetic materials are not affected by the temperature so we see that only certain materials have their own temperatures at which they undergo a sharp change in their magnetic field properties this temperature is called Curie temperature or Curie point above this Curie temperature certain materials lose their permanent magnetic properties the Curie temperature is named after French physicist Pierre Curie who showed that magnetism was lost at a critical temperature so let's look at Curie temperatures for some magnetic materials for example iron and we see that iron has a temperature of 1044 kelvins so above this temperature iron loses its property and it turns into a paramagnet so it seems only below the Curie temperatures magnetic materials retains their property so this is the definition for the Curie temperature Curie temperature is the temperature above which magnetic materials lose their ferromagnetic properties and replaced by paramagnetism in simple words we can say Curie temperature is the temperature at which ferromagnetic materials transit to paramagnetic materials and now pay attention to this demonstration I want to show you some property of a ferromagnetism we have tiny nails near the big nail and when the magnet bar is brought close to the big nail tiny ones attracted to it as to a magnet but you cannot get the same results with a pencil for example so we see that iron acts here like a magnet from observations we see that the big nail acted like a magnet and it means it creates its own magnetic field generally iron and other materials can form permanent magnets like the kind that stick to a refrigerator and the magnetic properties of these materials emerge from the behavior of electrons inside every electron is like a tiny bar magnet the direction of its magnetic field is directly related to a property of the electron called spin now non-magnetic materials have electrons that come in pairs these pairs always have spins that point in opposite directions the resulting opposing magnetic fields cancel each other out so that's why atoms of non-magnetic materials have no magnetic field that's why they cannot react to a magnet but magnetic materials have few unpaired electrons in their outer orbits these unpaired electrons generate a weak magnetic field and that's why magnetic materials are attracted to a magnet because each atom in a magnetic material acts like a weak magnet and let's go to the question how materials such as iron can be magnetized and how materials such as pencil or plastic cannot be magnetized so 
Unpaired electrons in a ferromagnet tend to align with their neighbors forming a small magnetic domain. This is one domain, this is another domain. Each domain behaves as a tiny magnet because it includes billions of electrons aligned in the same direction. In an unmagnetized material, domains are not aligned. Each domain points in a different direction so that each domain cancels out the magnetic force of another. For this reason, an unmagnetized iron cannot display magnetism. However, in a magnetized material, the domains line up pointing in a certain direction. The magnetic field of each domain combines with others so that all the domains together produce a large magnetic field around the material. The greater the number of domains lined up in the same direction, the stronger the magnet. So this is the theory of a magnetism. And this is the end of the lesson. If you like our video, please subscribe and share.